Um, a word on Fergie as well. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I noticed the Daily Mail reporting today that the, uh, the fact that Fer Fergie seems to be sort of back in the firm, as it were, uh, was a decision that apparently was taken towards the end of the Queen's life, that the Queen had something to do with this. Uh, yes. I mean, the Queen... We, we saw the headlines, Fergie's first return, you know, for 32 years. Well, she was actually there last year. Yeah. She just didn't attend the church service. And she, in fact, has been at Sandringham all the way through that 30 years, and she stayed at Wood Farm, where the Queen always went to have tea with her at least once or twice during the visit. Now, the Queen and Fergie have always got on well together, you know, and you know, unlike the uh, Diana who's separated and everything else. But with Fergie, there was always something about Fergie that the Queen liked. Prince Philip disliked her because of what happened, but the Queen really enjoyed her company, and she also believed that she was a very have decent mother as well. She's stuck by Prince Andrew. She's probably the only person who has stuck by Prince Andrew and is helping him. I'm not sure whether that's going to lead to anything. But so she has decided, uh, the Queen at the end, that uh, there should be some reconciliation with Fergie and Charles acceded to that. And also it's interesting that she's granted Fergie when the time comes a Windsor funeral and she'll be she will eventually be buried in the family plot, which, again, that, is a nice touch. I mean, that is, it is a nice touch, but that, that really surprised me because I always thought if you weren't royal blood, you didn't have the official lineage, uh, no. then you wouldn't be there. I, I wonder what kind of um, royalists will make in 100 years' time. Um, of, of that, because it, there may be well, precedent for it. I don't know, Charlie, but it's certainly I'm unusual. I'm not sure if there is precedent for it. I just think it was a nice thing to Agreed. do. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Queen to do that, uh, to, uh, you know, if you like, honour her ex-daughter-in-law in, in such a way uh, as to give her that, that right to be buried in the family plot, which always, again, underpins the fact that the Queen always had a soft spot for Fergie. And again, you would, uh, you know, you'd have bet the farm on the fact that Fergie might have been, because she was a bit of an outsider. She was, yeah. um, she obviously came from pretty good stock, for goodness sake. However, you know, she was, she was, uh, you know, a, 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 a bit of a, a player on the social scene, right? I mean, that's yeah. how she was also known. And we remember the uh, some of those famous front page pictures of her with her uh, subsequent partner whose name escapes me. I'm sure you'll remember him as well. John the, Bryan. The, yeah, the, the, the toe incident and all the rest of it. Goodness me. So um, there was all of that going on. You might think that she wouldn't be allowed in the same postcode as the royal family, but no, here she you, is. You, welcome you, back. Right. And when I did the royals and whenever we came across Feg, and, you know, we, we used to write some what she would think would be terrible things about her, but, you know, were, were actual factual things about her. She, she made some... Uh, bad decisions, some bad financial decisions. Also, the toe sucking wasn't exactly a great decision to do either. Yeah. Uh, but I always had a lot of time for her, and uh, she was always very, very friendly. It was always good chats with her. Um, you know, I, when I say jolly hockey sticks, I don't mean that in a derogatory term. She was always very bright, very breezy. You know, always had a had a you know how's the family and all that sort of stuff. You know, which was always very nice you know, to hear, and it was always pleasant to be in her company, even when things were not going well for her. Yeah, I would imagine, I mean, putting all of that aside, if I was going to sit down with a gin and tonic with any of the, uh, the, the roles, I'd imagine Fergie would be the one that you'd have a bit of a giggle with. Yeah, you would certainly have a giggle with Fergie, there's no question about that. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Charlie, thank you. Charlie Ray with us here <laughs> on Talk TV. Tom Slater is with us. Uh, as well. Um, Tom, you're probably a couple of weeks younger than me, so yeah. you might not be fully uh, across... M might not have been fully across the toe incident and Fergie, but I, I, I saw you nodding history. along. You, your, your journalistic endeavours have meant at some point you had to research that. Exactly. What a shocking moment that would have been when those photographs popped up on your laptop. <laughs> exactly. I've deleted the history incident. <laughs> Only on Talk TV we get talk of toe-sucking before lunchtime. That's Absolutely right, right. yes. Normally that would be post-Watershed. Yeah. But that was... I mean, it's... It, it is extraordinary that Sarah Ferguson mm. has sort of... I, I know it's her close relationship with Andrew, and some people scratch their head on that a little bit, but mm -hmm. that's the setup they've got. They divorced, it was amicable, and mm -hmm. they're still great mates, and she lives with him. No, and that's so, quite extraordinary in itself. It is extraordinary, but all sorts of strange arrangements happen around the royal family, don't they? Um, and True. I think it was one of those things where, obviously, 
Fergie and in her day causing a fair amount of scandal. But it was also someone who was still in the background, wasn't someone who was seen to be kind of exploiting the um, the connection to the royal family for her own... Yes, whatever. that's a good point. And so because of that, I think it was a lot easier perhaps for, for the Queen yeah. to sort of play favourites in relation to her, without it being as much... I think Russell, so. Much of a sort of public so. Scandal. Have you watched the, the coronation documentary? I haven't seen it. It's worth it a look because it's not the kind of thing that I would ordinarily have gravitated mm -hmm. towards. But it was just, I just thought the st watching how a coronation is put together mm -hmm. is, is interesting enough. Then put the, getting the crown measured, but the, the guy that sits there with the crown in his hand, re putting jewels in and, mm -hmm. and welding bits to it is extraordinary. The tapestry, the making of the gowns and all of it. And then, of course, the sheer choreography of mm -hmm. putting this huge event together was massive. And some quirky little outtakes in there as well. Anything in particular stands out? Sort of... um, I think it was just... I, actually, I thought the, the, the old Bean reference that was just mm. referred to there, it was a little bit of that. Charlie... You know, Charlie... <laughs> King Charles talking about his sausage fingers, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, Self-appreciating stuff.